Okay, welcome and good afternoon. Welcome to this math lesson for the day. I am your teacher for the day. My name is Mistress Daxon. And working in the back to answer your question, I have Mistress Poit there and Mrs. Kemp. They will be answering any question that you have for today. Okay, before we get started with our topic for today, I would like for you to get a nail, a pen, pencil, or a notebook to take notes because it's gonna be an interactive work. It's gonna be an interactive lesson and you would need to be taking some notes and also answering questions. <laughs> So let's look at our objective for the day. Our objective for the day is to define algebra. Define and identify algebraic vocabulary. Simplify algebraic expression by collecting like terms. What is algebra? Algebra is the part of mathematics in which letters and other general symbols are used to represent numbers and quantities in formula and equations. Talking about equations, let's look at part of an algebraic equation. An equation consists of a term to a term and equation always have an equal sign. The difference between an equation and an expression is an equation has an equal sign, an expression doesn't. 54B plus two is the expression. Why is it an expression? Because it does not have an equal sign. Now, when we put equal to 164, we now made this an equation. An equation says that whatever is on the left is equal to what's on the right, or whatever on the right is equal to whatever is on the left. Now, let's look at the various parts. 54 is called a coefficient. The coefficient is always the number in front of the letter. That letter is called the variable. So, in, in other words, the variable is the letter behind the coefficient, which is the number. So 54B, 54 is the coefficient and B is the variable. 54B also make up a term. Then we have an operator. The operator is the symbol, the math symbol that we're using. So we have plus. And two is now the constant. Constant is the, the number, sorry, by itself. The number by itself is called a constant. Also, we have 164, that's another constant because it's a number by itself. Now in this equation, because it's an equation, we have three terms. The terms, we have 54, B is one term, two is another term, and 164 is the other term. So there are three terms in this equation. Now, let's look, let's test to see how well we understand what was just being said. Okay, A says, fill in the blank by using the word from the word bind below to make, each, to make each definition true. Some words may not be used. So we have the words in our word bind. We have variable, constant, expression, power, equation, term, coefficient, multiplier. So we're gonna go through each of them and I'm gonna give you a minute to guess the answer as we go along. Number one says a group of term is called a or an blank. What is a group of term called? I'm gonna give you a second to give me the answer. If you said expression, you are correct. Like I said earlier, a group of terms together is called an expression. An expression, we know an expression does not have an equal sign. Let's move to number two. The blank is the number that is written in front of the variable. What is the number I said that is written in front of the variable? I'm gonna give you a second to answer the question. If you say coefficient, you are correct, excellent job. The coefficient is the number that is written in front of the variable. When we looked at that first example, we had 54, that was the coefficient. 
Now, number three, let's go on to number three. A number, a letter, number, or common, a combination of the two is called on a blank. What is it called? The letter, number, or combination of the two is called a or on. What is it called? I'm going to give you a second to guess, to put in your guesses. And of course, it's called a turn. So if you got that, very good. Excellent job. Number four, let's now move on to number four. An or A or an blank is a letter that represents the unknown value. Now, we have something that always represents the unknown value. We do not know what it is. So we put something to represent that. And what is that something called? If you say a variable, you are correct. A variable is a letter that represents the unknown value. Good. So let's keep on going to number five. Number five said a number that stands alone is called a blank. What is the number that we say stand alone? When we're looking at that first example, what is that number says? What is that number? If you said constant, you are correct. The constant is the the constant is the number that stands alone. For example, in that equation, we had two was a constant and 164 was another constant. Very good. Number six says, another name for an exponent is an up. Now, we didn't have one of those in that example, but let's see how well you do. If you did, in your math class, you may have heard the word exponent, but we, we also use another word. Anyone can guess what that word is? That word is called power. So we usually would say three to the power of four, two to the power of five, where it's three with the small two at the top, that's a power or it's an exponent. Number seven, on a example are two or more terms that are equal, two or more terms that are equal. What do we call two or more? If we have something that has two or more terms that are equal, what is it called? What is it called? It is called an equation. Very well. If you got all or most of them right, good job. Give yourself a little pat on the back. Excellent work. I hope that I give you more insight on parts of an equation and algebraic expression. So we're going to do another set of questioning to make sure that you have it all done in part. So B says, look at the expression. Complete the chart by writing the coefficient constant variable and exponent in the correct column. Now, in this we have the expression. We are given the expression. We have to break down the expression into the different column. Constant, variable, coefficient, and exponent. Our expression says 3x plus 3xy to the fifth power plus 4. That's our expression. 3xy to the fifth, fifth power plus 4. Now we know that 4 is the constant. Why is 4 the constant? Because the constant is always the letter that the number that stands alone. Variables, we have two variables. Variables are always the letter. So our variables here are x and y. Coefficient, our coefficient here is three because the coefficient is always the number in front of the letter or the number in front of the variable. And the exponent, like we said, this exponent, like we would say y to the power of five. So five is our exponent. So let's try these two. The next one says 19 plus 5p minus q2. So 19 plus 5p minus q to the second power. So now let's look at it. What is the constant? Our constant is, if you said 19, very well. Now we're gonna find the variable. What is the variable? Our variable is Q and P, or P and Q. That's our variable. Very good. Let's continue going. The coefficient. What is the coefficient? 
the coefficient is i. Why is five the coefficient? Because the coefficient is always the number in front of the letter or variable. Our next, we have our exponent. What is our exponent? Our exponent is, if you said two, you are correct. Because two is, Q is to the power of two. Now let's go on to our last expression. Our third expression. Uh, third expression says 13m to the fifth power minus 12m to the fourth power plus 7. So I'm going to give you a minute to look at it, and then you can go through and put in your answers or just start down your answers. Okay, now we ready? Let's go, let's go, let's move to the constant. What is the constants? We know that the constants are the number that stands by itself. So our constant is, our next we have the variables. What are the variables? Our variables we know are the letters. So what are our letters? We have M and N. Next, we're gonna go to the coefficient. What is the coefficient? We know that the coefficient are the numbers in front of the letters. Now, how many coefficients are there in this one? If you said two, you are correct. And they are 13 and 12. And for the exponents, what are the exponents? The exponents are, we know, we have two exponents, what are they? They are five and four. If you got them all correct, most correct, give yourself a clap. Excellent job. And let's continue going forward. Now we're going to be looking at we're going to be looking at simplifying algebra expression by collecting like terms. So we know what a term, we know what is a term. We know a term does not have a term, it does not, we're not looking at equations, we're looking at expressions. And from the expression, we know that an expression can have one, two, or more terms. So we're going to be simplifying algebra expression by collecting like terms. So I'm going to let you watch another video to get you more familiar with what we're going to be looking at next. What's combining like terms? You know, it's like when you combine things that are like. Does that mean you can put like three x with two y? No. no. That's like trying to combine apples and pears. Ew. But I like bananas. <laughs> gonna try to combine like terms it's really very easy yeah something you can learn when you want to do it you look at what you got put the same guys together is it hard no it's not look at this problem let's see what we can do 3x plus 4 plus 2x minus 2 put the 3x and the 2x together it's so live how many x's do you have it looks like we have five what about the other stuff the regular number dudes the negative 2 and positive 4 combine to make a 2 now you got your answer you write it down with pride, putting like terms together, that's how we simplify, I got some x's and some x squareds, the values aren't the same, don't you dare put them together or you're going down in flames, it's such a simple concept, it's so easy, it's not fair, put the apples with the apples and the pears with the pears, now we gonna try to combine like terms, it's really very easy, yeah, it's something you can learn, when you wanna do it, you look at what you got, put the same guys together, is it hard, no it's not, now look at this one, I'll try to make it harder, if if you get it right, then I know you're getting smarter. 9 Pac-Man plus 3X plus 8 Pac-Man more. That's 17 Pac-Man plus 3X is the answer to be sure. The Pac-Man go together. As terms, they are alike. They told the 3X he could join with. Then they said, Sight! If you want to add some Pac-Man to some X's, just don't do it. Your teacher will mark your paper with an X and say you blew it. 
What if there's a variable without a coefficient? I'll tell you how to deal with that, but please, you gotta listen. A lonely X is sitting there without a number in front. Just stick a one in front of it, it doesn't change it, son. Now you're ready to combine an X with a 4X. 1X plus 4X is 5X, you pass a test. How you like us now, we got mad combining skills. We're digging, doing math while dropping lines that are so ill. It's time you head it back to work for questions you won't miss. And if you ever think you're stuck, you must remember this. It's such a simple concept, it's so easy, it's not fair. With the apples, with the apples, and the pears, with the pears. Okay, I hope that video you learned something and you will be able to take it with you as we go forward. Now, like I said, we're going to be looking at simplifying algebraic expression through addition and subtracting. So we're going to be adding and subtracting like terms. Now, these are some of the rules that we're going to be used, that are used and that we are going to be using going forward. I need you to remember them as you go. When an algebraic expression has more than one term, the leg terms may be added or subtracted. Now, when you watch the video and they talk about apple and oranges, we know we can only add apples with apples and orange with orange. Our next thing says only like terms can be collected together under addition and subtraction. Like I said, only apples with apples, oranges with oranges. If the terms are different, you cannot add apples and grapes when you would just leave it the same. So let's look at it in a, a little more closer. Let's okay. Okay, now it says example, simplify the following where possible. So we have P plus P. When you have it like that, there isn't a one, it's telling me that there's one P plus two P. We don't write one, to, we don't put the number one to say there's one P because we know that one, a P means there are one P. So we have one P plus one P. So what would your answer be? One P plus one P would give us If you said 2p, you are correct. So 1p plus 1p is going to give us 2p. Let's move on to number two. C plus 9c. C plus 9c. What is the answer for that one? The correct answer for that one is 10C. Very good. C plus 9C is going to give us 10C. And we know that we don't put the one because we automatically know that there is one C. Let's go to number three. I'm going to give you a minute to respond to number three. Write down your questions and your answers. 8Q minus 3Q. Eight Q minus three Q. If you said five Q, you are correct. Number four, five plus three A. Let me see what your answer is gonna be for this one. Five plus three A. Our correct answer is five plus three A. Why is it that? Because five does not have an A. So we cannot, we do not know what they, it does not have a variable. So we cannot add it to the three A. So 
because five plus three are not the same term. A term is five and the next term is three A. We cannot add them together because they are two different terms. So five plus three would be the answer. We would leave it the same because the terms are different. Let's go to number five, three Y minus two Q. I'm gonna give you an answer. Give you a chance to check that one. Three Y minus two Q. And the correct answer is 3y minus 2q. Like, just like number four, 3y is one term, 2q is another term. Those terms are different, so we cannot add, unlike or subtract, unlike term. So therefore, because they are different, the terms are not the same, we, the expression remains the same. So our expression remains 3y minus 2q, unlike terms, so we cannot we have to let it remain the same. Let's go on to a little more challenging one. Let's see how you do on this one. Let's go to this one. I'm gonna give you a minute to solve number six. It says four X plus seven plus three X minus four. Four X plus seven plus three X minus four. Think you get it? You ready? Let's go, let's see how we do. So first thing you do, you're gonna collect all the like terms. So our first like, like terms is 4x and 3x. So remember, when you're collecting like terms through addition and subtracting, the like terms, the term takes the sign that's in front of it. So therefore we're gonna have 4x plus 3x. The term always move with the sign in front of it. So please bear that in mind. So therefore we had plus 3x, so we brought down plus 3x. So we finished with the x's. Now we have numbers by itself. And what are those numbers by itself called? They are called, what are the numbers by themselves called? They are called constant, very good. Constant, so now we have some constant, so we're gonna group the constant. So our first constant is plus seven. Remember, we take it with the sign, minus four. So let's write that down, plus seven, minus four. Now we have the x's by themselves and the constants together by themselves. Now we can do what it says. It says four x plus three x. So what is four x plus three x? We end with, we get seven x. Let's look at minus seven plus seven minus four, or we say seven minus four. And our answer is plus three, and that is complete. Any questions on that one? Let me go over it so that you can see going forward. The first thing I did was I collected all the X's. I put the four X plus three X because the, it takes the sign in front of it. The term takes the sign in front of it. So if it's three X, you have to take the plus three X. After we finish with the X, we move over to the constant. We have plus seven minus four. So when we solve the, the X's, we have four plus three give us seven X and seven minus four gives us three. Okay, now let's move on to number seven. I'm gonna give you a minute to answer number seven. Okay, we ready? Ready to start? Let's go. Number seven says 6m plus 4p plus 3m minus p plus seven. So what are we first gonna do? We're gonna first collect, put all the like terms together. And our first term we have is 6m. So we're gonna bring on 6m and we have plus 3m, remember it has to go with the sign in the front of it. So our first expression is gonna be 6m plus 3m. 
Next, we're gonna move over to the P's. We have plus four P minus P. Remember, it always goes with the sign in front of it. So we have plus four P minus P. And we left with a seven. The constant doesn't have anything to go with it, so we just bring it down. Good. Now, we finished the first layer of that equation, of that expression. So let's move on to do the second part. On this part, we're gonna be, we already put all the like sum together. So now we're gonna add or subtract them where necessary. So let's go to the first one. 6m plus 3m, which is gonna give us 9m. Next, we have 4p minus p, and we will end up with plus 3p. And the seven, like I said, it doesn't have anything to add or subtract with it, the constant, so we just bring it down. So that will be our answer. 9m plus 3p plus seven. Good job, if you got that all correct, give yourself a pat on the back. Excellent job, excellent, excellent, excellent. Even if you got any part right, good job, give yourself a pat on the back, but even trying. Excellent job. Let's move on to number eight. 16p minus 7d minus 12p plus 8d. I'm gonna give you a minute to try it, work the answers, and then I'm gonna work it for you. Be ready. Okay, now we have 16P minus 7D minus 12P plus 8D. Now, when you work this out, I know there is something a little tricky, so we're going to see what we came up with. So the first thing we're going to do, like we did previously, is collect all the like terms. Our first like terms, we're going to start with P. So we're going to have 16P minus 12P. And we did that because, like I said, we always take the sign in front of the, the term. So we have minus 12P. Now we're going to move, we finish with P, we're going to move on to D. We have minus 7D plus 8D. Remember, always take the sign in front of the term. Now, we're going to, I'm going to give you a minute. If you got that, raise your hand and give yourself a clap on the back. If your second line looks like this, you have to set it like this. I don't want you jumping to the answer. You need to show each part each step, so we're showing each step as we go along. The first step was to collect the like terms, put them together. Do not try and just work them out, go straight to the answers. We need to see your working, you always show your working, always show your steps. So my step, my first step was to collect the like terms and I wrote them down together. So now, you need the step because this one is gonna, could end up being a little tricky. Let's go to the next step, the next step. 16p minus 12p, 4p, good. Now, I written, you see how I wrote this one? I put plus 8d minus 7d. I wrote it because it's best to write the positive number first. Some of you may have wrote minus 7d plus 8d. That is correct as well. But when it comes to the second step, if you are not a strong person in algebra, you can end up, I'm sorry, in integers, you can end up into trouble because minus 7D plus 8D is going to give us 1D or D. But the, if you have a positive number and a negative number, a positive sign in front of a number and a negative sign in front of a number, it's always best to write the positive one first. Like how I did, I put plus 8D 
minus 7D. Like I said, I could have wrote, written it minus 7D plus 8D. It would also be correct. So 8 minus 7 gives us 1D. Um, because it's only 1, we don't have to put the number 1. We just would put D. Now let's recap number 8. Number 8, I put it there just to make sure I get you used because sometimes it's not always going to be where you see it works so sometimes you have to do a little shuffle around sometimes you have to use prior knowledge in this sense you needed to know your integers if you were to write it as minus 7d plus ad you had to be had to know integers whereas like a term would say same sign add the same sign add and keep the sign different sign subtract and take the sign of the largest number so we know that if i had at 7d minus Instead, minus 7d plus 8d, I, I will go back to my, uh, my integers. I remember it says same sign Adam because I had different sign. I would have subtract, which would have been 7 from 8, would have given us 1. And the answer take the sign that's in front of the largest number, which was d. Very good. Okay, now it is game time. Game time. Have your pen on your pen. So ready, I'm going to be testing your knowledge on some more algebra. So I'll be ready. Let's go. Are there any questions? If you have any questions, please put your questions below. Mrs. Kemp and Ms. Poitier are gladly ready to answer any question you may have. Okay, in this game, you're going to be simplifying algebraic expression by collecting like terms. So we're going to pick a letter. So you pick your letter and, and the first letter we're going to go with is We don't have to go in order. So what's going to be our first letter? Let's say I'm going to choose F. Let's go to F. Okay, give me one sec. We're going to stop at F, but give me one second. Okay, now we back up, sorry about that. Now let's go to F, we said F. So F says, simplify the following way if possible. Everyone should be able to get this one. What is the correct answer for F? You have, everyone has logged in their answers. And the correct answer is if you got 27 q you are correct 8 q plus 9 q gives us 27. okay let's return to home let's choose another letter let me choose c so let's go to C. Fourteen plus nine Z minus two. Fourteen plus nine Z minus two. Log in your answers. 
Everybody ready? And the correct answer is, drum roll, doo -doo -doo -doo. let's go. First, we're gonna remember you have to always show your working. So it's 14 minus two plus nine Z. And the correct answer is 12 plus nine Z. Now, if you got nine Z plus 12, that is also correct. Very good, good job. Keep it going, keep it going. Let's go, let's choose another letter. So we're gonna choose E, let's go to E. E says 14H minus nine, my, oh, sorry, 14H plus nine minus five H plus minus eight. So five H minus eight. Let's go. First thing we know, we collect the like terms. We put all the like terms that are like together. That will be our first step. You always do it in steps. You always show your working. I'm gonna give you a chance to show your working. Good job, good job. Be ready for the answers. Now I'm gonna show my answers in step. The first step we did, I put together all of the H. 14H minus 5H. That's, now we're gonna put plus nine minus eight. And our final answer, and our answer would be nine H plus one. If you get it right, very good, excellent job. Excellent job, keep it going. Let's go to another one. Let's choose A, I haven't done A as yet. Let's go to A. A said Z plus 14Z. Z plus 14Z. Everybody logging the answers? I see that didn't even take a second. Let's go very well, very well. Keep the answers coming. Keep the answers coming. Very good, and we know Z plus 14Z is gonna give us 50. Z. Great job, great job, great job. Let's go to B. Let's go to B. Let's see what B says. B says 8x plus 15 minus 7x. For all those persons who were voting for B, here goes B. Let's go, let's get it. 8x plus 15 minus 7x. Remember, we show you're working, collect your like terms, and you go from there. Always show working. You ready? Okay, I see many of you are plugging in your answers. Very good, excellent. Love it, love it, just love it. 8x minus 7, when we collect our like terms, remember, always remember, there, we take the sign in the front of it, so we have minus 7x, so we're, it will be 8x minus 7x, and it's plus 15, so we put in plus 15. So our answer would be 8x plus 15. Very good. Good job, guys. Good job. Good job. Keep it up. Keep it going. Let's click. Let's choose another number. We haven't done D, G, and H. Where do we want to go next? D, G, and H. We have, we have those three to go. So we're going to go with D. Okay, let's see what's behind door D. Okay, very good. Excellent. It says minus 7N plus 17 minus 19 minus 3N. I'm gonna give you a minute. Now remember, you have to show your work and you have to collect your like terms. And this one would be spoke about is algebra. 
You have to remember that algebra. I don't know if you've ever heard this song. You need to go on YouTube to look it up. It says, same signs are different signs of that. It's a nice song. It's really, really good. Helps you really well with algebra. I'm sorry, with integers, sorry, integers. So if you need help with your integers, just watch that song. It's an amazing song. It talks about same, then adding and subtracting integers. If you've watched it or heard it, this is going to be where it comes into play. Okay, are we ready? Be ready. Let's go to our first step. First step, collecting like terms. And when we collect them, we collect the sign that's in front of each of them. So the first thing we're going to do is minus 7n minus 3n. That's the first term. That's the n's. Now we're going to look at the plus 17 minus 19. Now we have minus 7 minus 3. When the signs are the same, you add and you keep the sign. That's the rules for adding uh, integers. Same sign you add. So we have a minus 7, minus 3. So it's minus 7, minus 3. Both of them are saying minus. So then we add and we keep the sign. The next side says 17 minus 19. So if you have 17, then you have to take away 19. And this side says, like the rule said, if you watch the video, when you go watch the integer video that talks about same signs are different signs subtract. This side was, it will tell you that you are going to subtract because there's a plus and a minus. When the signs are different, you subtract, but you keep the sign that's in front of the largest number. The largest number here is 19. So we keep the sign that's in the front of the 19. So it'll be two, negative two or minus two. So your answer would be minus 10 minus 10 n minus 2 or minus 10 n take away 2. Good job. If you get that, that was a little challenging. I know you should feel very well. Excellent job. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Now let's go. We have two more to go. So let's go to H. Let's choose H. Okay, 12w minus 18w minus 17 plus 10. Okay, I see my answers are lighting up you are putting in your answers very good very good and make sure show your steps so that if you have to look back at what you did i hope you save it someplace where you can go back and review it after this presentation is over so you can review this is another question that require you to know your integers so let's look at it we have two w now for this one before I go into the answers, we know that the like terms are already collected. So we didn't have to move around anything. They were all the W's were together and the constants were together. So we did not have to go and collect anything and move anything around. Everything was right where they needed to be. So we just needed to solve it. So we have 2W minus 18W, which would have given us minus 16W. Because if you have 2 minus 18, you're going to end up with 16. Now, another thing, if, um, if you're looking at integers, like I said, with the song with the same sign, add different signs to try. The two, if no sign in front of you, no, that's a positive. So you have a positive and negative. The signs are different, so we automatically subtract and keep the sign that's in front of the largest number. Then that goes for the next side as well. Minus 17 plus 10. The signs are different, so we subtract. Anytime the signs are different, you subtract. And when you subtract, your answer will take the sign that's in front of the largest number. The largest number is 17, so we end up with a minus 7. So 17 minus 10 is 7, and the largest number has a negative sign. So we have minus 7 is our answer. 
Good, keep the question coming. If you don't understand, ask the question, keep it coming. You got it right, excellent, excellent. You're doing very well. Now my last question for today, and I hope some persons got all, did very well in this game. Our last questions for the day comes from H. Let's go to H. Oh, we did that. Oh, we didn't do, did we do G? Sorry. Let me see if we did G. Oh, G, we didn't do G. G was the one that we did not do. It says 6Q minus 16Q. Okay, and our answer would be 10Q. Why is it 10Q? Because we're dealing again with integers. If you have six and you take away 16, you're gonna end up with 10. So what we do, the integers, Laura says, when the signs are different, like I said earlier, and no sign in front of six, we know that's a positive. So positive numbers does not need, need a sign. So we have positive six minus 16. So the signs are different. So what we do, we subtract, and we keep the sign in front of the largest number, which is 16, so it'll be a negative 10. Okay, I hope you did very well. Okay. I want to say thank you again for participating in this lesson today. And I also want to give a shout out to my two panelists, Mrs. Camp and Mrs. Flowers for helping with all of your questions. And thank you guys for being very good participant and answering questions and making this lesson a success. Thank you once again, and you have a great day.